do you have a melodious voice? Do you, do you have a great singing voice? Or do you just make a joyful noise? And do you really understand what it means when you say joyful noise? Hey, I'm going to give you seven reasons that you should be singing. And I'm going to change your perspective today as we dig into the Word. So let's get started. Hey, child of God, welcome to the Rich Thoughts webcast brought to you by the Debt Free Army. Hey, look, just take your mouse right now before I get started. Move up to the top where it says sow a seed and just ask God if today is the day. Or just be praying as you watch the show and meditating and, and just see what God wants you to do. And by the way, send me an email. If you're the seventh person to send me an email, I'm going to sow $50 in your life. Doesn't matter what the email is about, just send it to me. All right. Seven reasons you should be singing. So how's your singing? Do you sing primarily in the choir or maybe the pew? Or just in the shower or when you're driving along the highway? And what kind of music do you sing? Are you singing uh, you know, uh, rhythm and blues or gospel or Christian or pop or jazz or country and western or hip hop? What kind of music are you singing? And is your singing voice one that only a father could love and enjoy? Well, we're going to kind of get into this a little bit. You know, I have people said, do you sing? And I said, yes, solos. I sing solos. Solo, you can't hear it. Anyhow, that's what I used to say. But not anymore. I'm telling you, with this teaching, God gave me a real revelation. All right. Uh, he gave me the first revelation again when, in the last part of Mark 11, 23. And the, uh, uh, here's what it says. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he saith. Now, my revelation continued, fresh revelation, as I read 90 Psalm 95, 1 again. Read it many times before. Here's what it says. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Now, I used to make a lot of jokes about my singing being a joyful noise. But then I went to the dictionary and I looked up what it had to say. And here's how it defines noise. Sound, especially of a loud, harsh, and confused kind. Now, truthfully, I thought maybe that sounded like my singing. But then I felt led to go to Strong's Concordance and I looked up joyful noise and got a whole different revelation. Here's what it means. To shout, raise a sound, cry out, give a blast, to shout a war cry or, uh, or an alarm of battle, to shout in triumph over enemies, to shout in applause, or to cry out in distress. In short, a joyful noise is not a song, but a shout. And we should be shouting all the time. And you can shout whether you've got a five octave range like Aaron Neville, or you've got a singing voice like mine. We're supposed to shout in battle, in distress, in defeat, and in triumph. But we're to shout unto the Lord. Then I went a little further and I went to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. The Amplified Bible. And it changed my perception and my reality about singing unto the Lord. Here's what it says. Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom and spiritual things, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody to God with His grace in your heart. Now, here are seven reasons you should be singing unto the Lord. First, the Word, well, let me just say first and fundamentally, the Word of God should have its home in your heart and in your mind. Luke 6.45, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, we should be speaking the words that Christ spoke. Proverbs 23.15 in the Message Bible, This child, if you become wise, I'll be one happy parent. My heart will dance and sing to the tuneful truth that you'll speak. Hallelujah. That's one. 
we got six more and we'll get to them right after this. You know, there's all different kinds of money. There's hard-earned money, inherited money, stolen money, gambling money, and the list goes on and on. I'm Harold Herring, president of the Debt-Free Army, and I'm here to tell you about a very different kind of money, miracle money. I've discovered that God's miracle money is available not just to a select few, but to those who know how to reach out and receive it. I want to send you a free copy of a book that I helped develop and publish entitled Miracle Money. God told me to put this book into the lives of those who had the faith to pick up the phone and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. If you're suffering economic hardship, if it seems you just can't make ends meet financially, then this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. The book is free. The call is free. So why not pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE? Learn about the miracle money God's holding for you. Call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. Welcome back. Today we're talking about seven reasons you should be singing. And number one, the Word of God should have its home in your hearts and minds. Second, you should be teaching, admonishing, and training others in the Word of God. And truthfully, that should be a no-brainer for all born-again believers because of the Great Commission. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, add to that Hebrews 5.12, in the New Living Translation, because I think it kind of sums things up, you've been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you, again, the basic things about God's Word. Not good. Third, your teaching should contain insight, intelligence, and wisdom. Now, this kind of teaching is not based on your educational level or your intellectual prowess, but rather the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 2.16 in the Amplify. For who has known and understood the mind, the counsels, and purposes of the Lord as to guide and instruct Him and give Him knowledge. Here we go. But we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of His heart. How? Hallelujah. Every believer needs to get that established in them. Get it down inside. Now, I want to give you Colossians 3.16 this time in the Amplified Bible. One more time. Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness as you teach, admonish, and train one another in insight, intelligence, and wisdom and spiritual things. And as you sing, I'm saying it for you again, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, make a melody to God with His grace in your hands. Fourth, you should sing psalms. According to Strong's Concordance, the word psalms means a striking, twanging, <laughs> twanging of, a, of striking chords of a musical instrument of psalm. Now, I, I got a smile on that as I think about all the folks who talk about twangers in country and western music. Well, the Word of God says that God wants us to be a twanger. Go figure. 1 Chronicles 16, 9. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all His wondrous works. Number five, you must sing hymns. You must sing hymns. According to Strong's Concordance, hymns means a song in praise of God's, of God, heroes, conquerors, sacred song, hymn. Does your definition of hymn, the kind, does that definition of hymns line up with the kind of hymns that you're singing in your church? Probably not. Because we should be singing hymns of victory. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Six, you should be singing spiritual songs. You should be singing spiritual songs. You know, there's a very specific scripture that talks about spiritual songs. It says, And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Mighty and marvelous are your works. O Lord God, the omnipotent, righteous, just, and true are your ways. O sovereign of the ages, king of the nations. And seventh, you should be singing to God with grace in your heart. We're not just to sing to God, but we're told to sing to God in a very specific way, with grace in our hearts. According to Strong's Concordance, the word grace, charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, means that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech, goodwill, 
Loving kindness, favor, benefit. Hallelujah. We're to be singing that way because it's going to benefit the Lord. I want to look at Colossians 3.16 again in the Message Bible. Let the Word of Christ, the Message, have the run of your house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using common sense and sing. Sing your hearts unto God. Finally, Ephesians 5.19 Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praises with voices and instruments, and making melody with all your heart until the Lord. So having said that, let me hear you sing. I realize I can't through this internet, but let God hear you sing right now. Because you now know seven reasons why you should be singing. Take your mouse, go to the top where it says sow a seed. Just ask God if this is the day that He'd have you sow a precious seed into the ministry of the Rich Thoughts Television Network and the Debt Free Army. God bless you. Keep thinking rich thoughts and happy trails until we meet again.